These are the sounds you'll hear walking into Pine Knoll Clock Shop and Appraisals in Mercer, Pennsylvania. These are all restored clocks that are for sale. I've either bought them from an estate or, or somebody came in. Looking around, you find all manner of clocks in this shop, from small cuckoo clocks and mantle clocks to large grandfather clocks. For owner and horologist Doran Mace, these clocks are his passion, one that started back in 1969 with the passing of his grandfather. They had a house that was granted to them from the Revolutionary War, so we're talking 1780. They never threw anything away. One of the summer kitchens was full of every clock that house ever had, and I was just fascinated. I wasn't very old, but I was fascinated enough to know to look at that, and that's what I wanted to do. When I say what you want to do, that's a calling. While learning the craft, May says he took apart about 200 clocks of his own before he started repairing clocks for others at the age of 18. The hobby eventually turned into a side business until he officially opened his shop in 2001, turning it into a full-time gig. I thought this would be a 10-hour-a-week hobby, and it, uh, it is no longer 10 hours a week. It's quite, quite a lot more than that. Beyond the retail space at Pine Knoll is the workshop where you can see all the projects Mace is currently working on lining the walls and shelves. This is a wag on the wall is what this one is called. You have a very, an early cuckoo clock from the late 18, mid to late 1800s. This one is actually from the Ukraine. And then more cuckoo clocks and more cuckoo clocks. We do tons of cuckoo clocks. And that's just to name a few. One clock he's really excited about working on is this rare McClintock master clock that was found in a junkyard in California. But this controlled the master clock that hung outside of banks and on courthouse squares and everything. Unlike Westminster that plays part of a melody, it actually had four distinct melodies played off of this drum. I know of only three of these and none of them work and I have this one. so. I'm more than excited to have this. Over on the other side of the room is the desk where Mace gets a lot of the fine detailed work done. But nothing is a high-end tool. The tools he uses include several different kinds of screwdrivers, various dental picks, files from the 1800s, and calipers for measuring. If you had to replace a spring and the number of the barrel is missing, you have to find the measurements exterior and interior. Clock repairs can range in price depending on size and simplicity. Let's say it's a time only piece. It's a simple one spring, you wind it, you're $85, $95. You go up to a Westminster, which is what this is, that's uh, three arbors and, and the five hammers and rods, then you're $125. Then you have a piece, there's an open escapement clock that they want the patina restored on. That'll be $500 because it's going to take me a week to do the patina on it. When he first started in the business of repairing clocks, there were 15 suppliers from which he could get replacement parts. Now he says there are only two, but because of a blog he runs that has about 200,000 followers, he has help from clock enthusiasts all over the world. We have people that are repairmen from Israel down to South Africa, down all over the world. We had a rare clock come in here and I finally had to find a part in Jerusalem of all places and have it shipped here. In addition to repairing and selling clocks, Mace even started his own line of clocks made from reclaimed and repurposed materials called the Green Line. I started the Green Line because I saw so much waste and uh, my wife and I are uh, We'll say hippies, for lack of a better term. You see all this waste and you know it can come back. And it just is a phenomenal item and it's been very popular and we're expanding it now. They're made out of wood and tin. They can be, we have 78 shellac wreckers from 1905 and all they're made out of. But it's phenomenal that you can take what people just tossed and you can make anything. Some of the items you'll find at Pine Knoll help make it a destination for the approximately 5,000 people that come to the shop every year. Items like this carillon. This was invented in 1949 by Mr. Shomerish. This actually came from his estate. Uh, it was one that he used and he had it refit in 1959 to have the role player on the inside of the machine.
Outside the shop, you can find a traffic light from the Ambassador Bridge in Detroit, Michigan, and a large clock that used to hang outside the Boltman Funeral Home in New Orleans. It was the oldest operating funeral home until Katrina destroyed it, and we rescued that clock and restored it. I cannot tell you how happy and blessed I am with this job. I have a degree in computer science and one in industrial engineering. I truly thought that's what I would be doing for the rest of my life. All, all that's gone away, but this is here and staying strong. And I was pretty much talked out of this when I was a kid. Many people kept saying, oh, clocks will be gone by the 80s. You won't have any mechanical clocks. And uh, yeah, they were wrong. And May says the business will continue going strong as younger generations fall in love with one particular aspect of clocks. It's the sound of that clock ticking. That is, it used to, there used to be an advertising slogan, the heartbeat of the home, you heard it ticking. It's just like reading a book. It's okay to have an e-reader, but that tactile feeling of that book and that looking at that clock as you watch the hands moving, it's just phenomenal. 717 Credit Union, savings power to give your business an extra boost. Business savings, certificates, and business money market. 717 Credit Union, make your money work as hard as you do.